requesting everyone to please rise for the singing of the Pambansang Awit ng Pilipinas with Ms. Sheena Ann Ambong conducting and please remain standing for the singing for the invocation through a song by Mr. Shields Lanasco. You may now all be seated. A pleasant morning once again to everyone, and this is a memorial lecture for Dr. Ramon Mozones, a National Artist for Literature awardee, and of course, one of the alumni of Central Philippine University to officially welcome us all in this morning's affair. May I call on our Vice President for Student Affairs, Reverend Joniel Howard Hiko. Dr. Cecilia Luxinava, our guest lecturer. She will be formally introduced later. Attorney Rex Mosones, son of Attorney Ramon Mosones and his wife Gloria. Attorney Von Lovell de Bidonad, CPU Board of Trustees Chair. Attorney Zacharias Bidona Jr., Dean College of Law. Members of the Board of Trustees of the CPU AAI who are here. Professor Esther Rose Rumarati. OIC of the Department of Languages, uh, Mass Communication, and Humanities, members of the DLMH, faculty and staff, students, guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. In behalf of the University President, Dr. Chidoro Sirobles, I welcome everyone to the Attorney Ramon Larupai Mosones Memorial Lecture. It is with great pride and honor that one of our alumni, Attorney Ramon Larupay Monsones, the 1952 CPU graduate of the Bachelor of Laws, has been posthumously awarded by the President of the Philippines, Republic of the Philippines, the Order of National Artists in Literature. The holding of this memorial lecture is a recognition of the university 
to the rare talent and contribution of her alumni in fields where they excelled. In this particular case, for attorney Ramon Larupa Mosonis in the field of literature. May his life and accomplishments continue to inspire and motivate each one of us to pursue excellence. Once again, welcome and good morning to everyone. Thank you very much, Reverend Hiko. At this point, we will be focusing our attention to the screen here as there will be a video tribute for Dr. Ramon Mozanes. So ladies and gentlemen, enjoy. Attorney Ramon Larupay Mozones was born on March 20, 1913 and was the eldest of 10 children of Florentina Larupay and Santiago Mozones from the town of Miagao, Iluilu. He is credited with initiating several firsts in Hiligaynon narrative tradition. Among them, the first Roman Eclef, Mangbong Asapat, or the Magnificent Brute in 1948. The novel of humor, Sitamblot, in 1946, and the first political satire, Tamblot Candidato Man, or Tamblot is also a candidate in 1949. A champion of the Hidigaynon language, he authored a Hidigaynon dictionary and grammar to combat the youth's growing post-war preference for the English language and co-founded the Gakud ni Sumacuel, or the Knights of Sumacuel, or Sumacuela. The oldest and largest surviving society of Ilongo writers in the Visayas, Mindanao, and Luzon, of which he was the president from 1948 to 1950. Acknowledged by his contemporaries as one of the three leading Hiligay non-novelists, he shared the honorific title Hari Sang Sugilambong, or the King of the Hidigaynon Novel, with Serapion Torre and Conrado Norado. He held the longest track record in the genre, having authored 62 novels from 1938 to 1992. In addition to the short stories, essays, and poems that he also wrote, he was editor of Hiligaynon and Yihum, two leading Ilongo magazines. He was conferred the Gawad Pambansang Alagad ni Balagtas by the Union ng Mga Manunulat sa Pilipinas in 1988. The Gawad CCP para sa Sining by the Cultural Center of the Philippines in 1989. And posthumously, the Gawad Bonifacio sa Panitikan Centennial Award by the National Commission for Culture and Arts in 1997. The Order of National Artists is the highest national recognition given to Filipino individuals who have made significant contributions to the development of the Philippine arts. The notable artists for literature are Amado V. Hernandez, Jose Garcia Villa, Nick Joaquin, Carlos P. Romulo, Francisco Arcellana, NVM Gonzalez, Rolando Estinho, Levi Celerio, Edith El Tiempo, F. Sionil Jose, Virgilio S. Almario, Alejandro Roses, Bienvenido Lumbera, Lazaro Francisco, Cirilo F. Bautista, Resil B. Mojarras. On the 24th of October 2018, Attorney Ramon Mozones was conferred the Order of National Artists for Literature or Orden Pambansang Alagat ng Sining posthumously by the President of the Republic of the Philippines along with Ryan Cayabyab for Music, Francisco Manosa for Architecture and Allied Arts, Resil Mojares for Literature, Larry Alcala for Visual Arts, Amelia La Pena Bonifacio for Theater, and Kidlat Tahimik for Film and Broadcast Arts. Two of Atorni Muzones' novels were translated by Dr. Maria Cecilia Noxin Nava, a specialist in the literature and culture of Western Visayan studies. Her 32-year study on Muzones was instrument in his winning the 2018 Order of the National Artist, 
the first regional writer to do so in the 45-year history of the award. Many firsts in Hidigan literature. He was the first one who did um, uh, a comic novel, the first comic novel, or I think it is the only novel of humor in Philippine Hidigan literature. And the history of Iloilo is actually in one novel of his. It's called Malala Magukum. Mm. which translated in English, he translated it as Malignant Hunger. After I started working on him, he won three national awards, you know, two of them during his lifetime. In 1988, the uh, Union ng Manunulat ng Pilipinas, this is Writers League of the Philippines, okay? He won that, the nas that na national award from them. And then in 1989, CCP gave him also a Gawa and Sassining Award. Okay. And then much, much later, in 1998, National Commission for Culture and the Arts gave him the Centenary Award. Attorney Muzones was married to Adelaida de la Cruz of Cabancalan, Negros Occidental, and had seven children, Rene, Rex, Rafael, Rita, Raquel, Ramon Jr., and Rui. Attorney Muzones received his Bachelor of Laws degree from Central Philippine University in 1952. get to know more about attorney Ramon Mozones in a bit with our speaker. At this point, ladies and gentlemen, to give us a glimpse of one of the works of attorney Mozones. This is Margot Satubig, a story of Salagunting, who in the journey to redeem what the family of his past had lost, found himself, discovered his identity, realized where his heart truly is. This is a tale of war, magic, power, discovery, most of all, love. Ladies and gentlemen, a dramatic excerpt from Margosa Tubig to be performed by Ms. Carmel Francis Romero and Engineer Vitini Edhard Edimne. Katipayan! Katipayan, this is Salagunting! Salagunting? Katipayan, I came from the kingdom below to look for you. Look for me? But what for? I no longer live. Katipayan, you have no idea how many obstacles I had to hurdle. Yes, you can blame me. But if you only knew what I went through, you would pity me. I know everything that happened to you. I have never been remiss. In every place you were, I followed you to make sure that no harm would come to you. But bitterness was all I got. If everything I did filled you with bitterness, that is because of my own flaws. But there were many things I did above ground that may look bad, but were well-intentioned. Not all the things that I did showed my true feelings. 
In my search for my destiny in this cruel world, I have never forgotten you. It's true. I made mistakes. I do not deny it. But can't I be forgiven? My heart, Salagunting, it is forgiving. How many times have I forgiven you without your even asking for it? I believe that true love is forgiving, not vindictive, even if that love was wounded and deceived. That's enough, Katipayan. I search for you to wash away my sins, to kneel at your feet and ask for your pardon. That's because I have learned from the cruelty of this world and I fault myself. I punish myself for being remiss. Now I am paying dearly for these sins. I don't ask for payment because you owe me nothing. All I want from you is allow me to find an end to my misery. Katipayan, I am here, and you should know that I came to visit down below expressly for you. Now that I've seen you, it won't do for you to refuse to come with me to that peace of heaven I have put up. I will bring you against your will. That is my intention. Against my will? Have you also become a bandit? Like the Sultan of Margosa Tubig? Yes, I am a bandit. If that is what you call one who follows his feelings, is a person who wants to recover an old precious treasure that slipped away, a bandit? I have no desire for glory like Datu Kadlum of Sarawak. More precious than gold is the treasure that I have retrieved that I will never lose again. No, I will not let you go. Do you understand that? Thank you very much, Ms. Uh, Carmel Romero and Engineer Edimne. So kids, remember, love is forgiving and never vindictive. To formally introduce our guest speaker this morning, may I call on our department chair, the officer in charge of the Department of Languages, Mass Communication, and Humanities, Professor Esther Rose Rumarate. Morning, everyone. <clears throat> I'm deeply honored to introduce to you our guest speaker in this first Ramon Mozones Memorial Lecture. When news broke out that Ramon Mozones was declared National Artist on October 24th, 2018, I immediately called to mind this passionate and dedicated Mozones scholar whom I met for the first time on February 12th, 2015 in her beautiful home in Bacolod City. That time, my West Visayan literature research team and I were on a quest to find out more about the Ilongo artist, specifically the Ilongo novelist. In our conversations with her that time, she expressed interest to come to CPU and talk about Mozones. Since then, I have had several attempts to organize a convocation for her. But God's timing is always perfect. What better time for her to come to CPU than now, when finally her wish to have Mazonas recognized as national artist has come true. Allow me to tell, me more, tell, tell you more about this rare gem of a scholar. A specialist in the literature and culture of Western Design Studies, Dr. Maria Cecilia Nava is a bilingual writer, researcher, and translator. She was once the College of Arts and Sciences Dean and Mass Communications Head at the University of St. LaSalle in Bacolod City. 
She also previously taught at St. Scholastica's College in Manila, Miriam College, and Ateneo de Manila University. She served as research consultant of St. Pedro Poveda College. Dr. Nava earned her Doctor of Philosophy in Philippine Studies from the University of the Philippines, Diliman. She holds a master's degree in English literature from the Ateneo de Manila University and a Bachelor of Arts major in English literature and pre-medicine degrees from the University of Santo Tomas. She was the first curator and director of the Negros Museum as well as that of Museo, Museo Negrense de la Sal. Excelling in both teaching and writing, Dr. Nava received various awards and fellowships. In 1994, she received the very prestigious Metro Bank Outstanding Teacher Award. A year before that, she was the first recipient of the Most Outstanding Teacher Award given by the Negros Occidental Private School Sports Cultural and Educational Association. In 1999, she was named by the Soroptimus International of Bacolod Woman of Distinction in Education. She was a member of the 1995 Rotary Group Study Exchange Team to Brazil and was visiting professor at the Catholic University of Tegu in South Korea in 1998. She was also a writing fellow of the Illegal Writers Workshop and the UP Marlaya First Children's Literature Writing Workshop in 2001. Um, Dr. Nava has authored four books, three of them National Book Award winners. These are History and Society in the Novels of Ramon Mazones, published in 2001, awarded Best in Literary Studies for 2002 by the Manila Critics Circle and the National Book Development Board, and two translations from Heligainon into English of two of Ramon Mazones' novels, Margus at Tubig, published 2012, a judge best novel in a foreign language by the Manila Critics Circle and the National Book Development Board in 2013, and also Sri Bisaya, published 2016, awarded best novel in a foreign language again by the same organizations in 2017. Her 32-year study on Mazonis was instrumental in his winning of the 2018 Order of the National Artist, the first regional writer to do so in the 45-year history of the award. She likewise penned from reduction to subversion the evolution of the Hiligaynon Corrido published 2008 and wrote for and edited 105 Western Visayan icons. National Commission for Culture and the Arts, the Lubhasa Sinings K-12 project. In recognition of her work in education, local arts and culture, the provincial government of Negros Occidental conferred on Dr. Nava the outstanding Negrosanon Award in 2016. She also won in 2017 the first ever Researcher's Prize from the National Commission for Culture and the Arts for her book on composer, actor, playwright, and director Joel Arbolario. Finally, she received another grant from NCCA for an illustrated children's book on folk literature in Negros in Hiligaynon, Cebuano, and English. Our speaker has not engaged only in writing, translating, researching, and teaching. Having been a breast and bone cancer survivor for 18 years, she founded Bosom Care, the Bacolod Breast Cancer Support Group in 2003, of which she is president. This is to help cancer patients by providing, among others, free mammograms. Centralians and guests, let us welcome the leading Mozones scholar in the country, Dr. Maria Cecilia Loxin Nava. It's okay. 
okay. fine. Okay. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Before anything else, I would like to congratulate CPU, Central Philippine University, for doing what Iloilo City and Province failed to do, which is honor Iloilo's first national artist. The National Artist Award is the highest award an artist in the Philippines can aspire for. And it's a very rare place, city or province that has produced one. Although there are exceptions like Anguno. Anguno Rizal has produced two national artists and it's just a small town. This is Lucio San Pedro for music and Carlos Botong Francisco for visual arts. But for Panay, before Mosones, there were only two. The first one to be awarded in 1973 was Jovita Fuentes of Capiz, an opera singer, so for music. And 26 years after, a second national artist from Panay came from Antique. This was J. Elizalde Navarro for visual arts. And it took another 20 years before Panay produced a third one. This is Ramon L. Mosones. So Central Philippine University has every reason to feel proud that it has produced a very rare breed of person. The first regional writer who wrote in his mother tongue in Hiligaynon to be awarded the Nas Order of the National Artist Award. Previously, yes, we should all clap. <laughs> Previously, literature, the awards in literature for the national artists were monopolized by writers in Filipino and in English. So for years, when I campaigned for his inclusion in the nomination for the national artist, I was told he will not make it. Why? Because he wrote in his mother tongue, in his native Hiligaynon, which he was very proud of. Okay? And my mentor, Dr. Bienvenido Lombera, whom you saw earlier as also a national artist, told me, the first time I told him I was going to work on Mosones, he said, who is he? I've never heard of him. And I said, you will. And 32 years after, everybody is hearing about him. But you have to have a lot of faith in what you are doing. So all of you there who are interested in research, the most important thing is to have faith in what you are doing because it will carry you through. So, Mosones is our first national artist. Iloilo should be celebrating its win because it is, this is what you call a groundbreaker. It's a groundbreaker. Why? No writer in his own native tongue has ever been awarded a national, uh, an, an order of the National Artist Award. Why? Because you need a translator. You need somebody to translate your work in English or in Filipino because those are the languages of power in this country. We are 70% of us are in the province, but the center is Manila. And if you want to make it as national artists, you have to be read by critics in Manila. And they will read you only in Filipino and in English. And so, without wanting to be a translator, I became one because I believed in what I was doing and I knew the only way I could do it, bring uh, Ramon Mosanes to the national ambit was by writing about his works or writing, translating his works in English. And so this, this, this morning, uh, not that I am advertising myself, but I brought up my books for those who are interested in reading him in English.
Okay? Because like it or not, the two languages of power in this country are English and Filipino. Okay, so this is, you saw earlier a cover of the original Margus Tubig in Hiligaynon. This is my translation. It is studied in the classrooms of UP Ateneo and DLSU in Manila. This is why it has undergone a second printing. And this is the second one. This is Sri Bisaya, his Masonist take on the Maragtas by Pedro Monteclaro. And so, to my lecture. Ramon Mosones from Region to Nation, or why Ramon Mosones deserves to be national artist for literature. Okay, let's go to the first one. Mosones was not just a novelist, although he wrote or he completed 61 novels. The 62nd, I think he failed to complete because he was sick already. He was a poet, essayist, short story writer, editor, critic, lexicographer, grammarian, lawyer, and novelist. Anybody who will contest that kind of qualification is free to do so, but it's very rare that you will find one person combining all of that. Okay, second slide, please. He was born, as a, uh, earlier actually, many of the things I will say here has been said already, because the one who prepared the video on Musones, I think has read my book. So he was uh, born in Lambunao on the 20th of March, 1913, and he died in Molo in August 19, 1992. His major works contributed to the Filipino sense of nationhood, starting with Margo Satubig. In 1946, may I have the first slide, please? <laughs> first slide, the earlier slide. I'm not through yet. In 1946, you home, a local vernacular weekly that was running a poor second to the Manila-based Hiligaynon, made publishing history in Iloilo by serializing a coming-of-age novel entitled Margo Satubig by 33-year-old writer named Ramon Mosones. The novel serialization raised you home circulation. They used to sell 2,500 copies a week but it went from 2,500 to 37,000 for 30 weeks because the novel was serialized in 30 weeks. This was an impressive record considering that its nationally distributed rival, Hiligaynon, which is published in Manila and circulated all over the Philippines, was only grossing 12,000. Uh, combining Bildung's Roman, epic history, legend, and romance, the novel dealt with the arduous struggle of a talisman Muslim hero to regain Margo Satubig, the kingdom his grandfather lost to an overweening tyrant that his father tried to regain at the cost of his own life. Next slide. This is the original novel, which was serialized in your home and published in book form by a local publisher by the name of Mariano Jolosa. Next slide. Margot Satubik's success inspired Mariano Jolosa, a local publisher, to print in serial form the book, which one enterprising customer made a minor fortune on by selling hundreds of copies. So he bought them very cheap and he sold them to homesick Ilongos abroad for $2 a piece and made a fortune. So this became Hiligaynon's literature first international bestseller. The only one who failed to make money on the book was Musones because he believed in Mariano Jolosa and did not ask for a contract for copyright. Written after the Second World War, Margot Satubig struck a nationalistic chord with its post-war audience who read rightly into Musones' portrayal of his young hero's repeated efforts to wrest back control of his kingdom, the Philippines' own attempts to ward off successive foreign invaders. So there is, did not need any, in, any explanation. What is 1946? This is the end of the war. Okay, and so people were hungry for stories of heroism and for the struggle of Philippine independence, and he struck a nationalistic chord. That's why the Yuho made a small fortune on the sale of its serialization. Next slide. Mosones tried his hand at a variety of literary types. You name any type, he wrote it. 
He wrote romantic novels, realistic, socio-political, humorous, satirical, and he was successful in all. Okay? But his specialty, he found his metier in the epico-historical allegory. Uh, national artist Virgilio Almario believes Mosones invented a new genre or a new type. He called it historical fantasy. Okay? Because given his idealistic and reformist bent of mind, he was a very idealistic person. He turned to this type again and again because it provided him material for two things that he was obsessed with. What is that? The making of an ideal leader and the concept of a just society. So he was a nationalistic writer. In his novels, if you read his novels, you will notice that he is always talking about an ideal leader because he was interested in the politics of power okay, and the ideal for just society. Next slide. So his major themes, novels, portray what Wuli Soyinka calls a visionary projection of a society, a hope for a better future or Benedict Anderson's imagined community, and this include his Muslim trilogy of Margot Satubig, Amurokpok, and Maratabat. Musonis was a great admirer of Muslim culture and Muslim heroes. Why? He admired the Muslims because never, they were never really subdued by our American or Spanish colonizers. And so therefore, he gave them, he gave them credit for that. Now, in these novels, he depicted the overarching theme of eternal vigilance is the price of freedom as Maranaus and Tausug struggle for unity in the face of tribal division. While in his two Maragdas-inspired novels, Sri Bisaya and uh, Bugna, he wrote about how ten Bornean datos craft a pre-colonial democracy in Edenic Panay which they bought from the Atis, while in Bugna, he tracks the Odyssey of Atimawa, or a lower class hero, into Maginoo status and Agurang status. Why? Because he was very much concerned or obsessed with the idea of social mobility. He loved to tell stories of how people pull themselves up by their bootstraps and eventually better themselves. And he had great faith in Atimawa. Okay, in the next slide, so his major themes were this, and applied to the present, he wrote what you call a socio-political novel called, or entitled Malala Ngagutum, in, uh, translated in English, Malignant Hunger in 1969. Note that, note that date. This was during the time of Ferdinand Marcos, because this novel is actually a commentary on the Marcos regime. Here, however, he captures also the post-war dispersion of political power in Iloilo City and the rise of the Ilongo independent-minded voting public, as well as the ascent of Rodolfo Ganson, the prototype of the novel's biblically named hero, Ismael Apostol, who uh, who, uh, who represents Ganson? Ganson is important in Iloilo history because he irrevocably changed Iloilo's political scene by wresting political control from Iloilo's socio-economic elite, typified by the late Vice President Eugenio uh, uh, Fernando Lopez, who dominated Iloilo politics from 1953 to 1973, thus paving the way for a more egalitarian Ilongo society. The next slide. What are the con why is Mosone so important? He did not just write 61 novels of various types. He did a lot for Hiligaynon for the Hiligaynon language. A rabid regionalist, he got caught up in the back to the native movement in Hiligaynon literature. So he wrote what Caroline Howe calls necessary fictions, narratives that supply a paradigm for a collective imagining, and he also exerted indefatigable efforts to disseminate and promote Hiligaynon, as well as to strip it of its foreign borrowings. Believe it or not, he started out as an English writer, then he went on to use Filipino or Tagalog, but he went back eventually to Hiligaynon because he believed it is the more expressive, the more nuanced, and the richer language. 
So he was really in love with the language. And so he offered, what did he offer? A Hiligaynon dictionary and a grammar to combat the youth's preference for English, which earned him a language consultancy in the public schools. Today we talk about K-12. Mosones dreamed that up a long time ago. Using the vernacular in the first two years in order to promote learning. And he was right because we are back to it again. To address Hiligaynon's downgrading to the language of the marketplace, he fathered two writers' groups dedicated to the enhancement and preservation of his native tongue. These were Talapu Anan Hiligaynon or Hiligaynon Society in 1946, which upon his instigation fused with two other writers' groups, Tulaling Bagakai and Talapu Anan Sidlanganon, to form Gaku di Sumakwel, or Knights of Sumakwel, or Sumakwelan, the largest and longest-lasting Hiligaynon writers' group in the country today, of which he was its first president. Next slide. What is his distinctive style? His literary model was Ernest Hemingway. And so he strove for a crisp, lucid, spare style characterized by short sentences and terse presentation, much imitated by younger writers like Conrado Norada and Purita Araneta, who used him as a literary model. Okay? When he did that, he was doing something very revolutionary. Why? Because Hiligaynon literature was just emerging from the shadow of the corrido. What is the corrido? The Corrido is the metrical romance which the Spaniards brought over here into the Philippines. Uh, you still see the Corrido whenever you watch a teleserie. Why? Because the, tele, the teleserie, the Filipino film, was very much influenced by the Corrido because it always has a linear plot line, beginning, middle, end. It always has black and white characters. Uh, the characters are either very good or very bad. And you can tell which are the good ones and the bad ones. The good ones, the hero is always very handsome. Okay? And the villain is ugly looking. Kag may bigote pa. So, very, how shall we say, stereotypic. Okay? It has a traditional path, happy ending. Maskin ano ang problema at the end everything turns out fine, okay? That's because of the influence of the corrido. And it has a literary style exemplified by Magdalena Halandones, kilometric soliloquies, laba, nga laba, nga mga soliloquy. You per the writer or the, the character talks to himself, nagahinakit, isa lang siya, hagadamu, kagalawig, sang iya nga hambal. Serap yun, Torres lengthy digressions, kung ano-ano ang mga nasulod. And then Angel Magahom's elaborately detailed description, typographic from the hair, from the top of the hair to the toes. Ang grabe nga grabe. What did Musones do? He took all that away. Why? Because he introduced modernism in Hiligaynon literature. Next slide. Also, because he was so good in both the native and the foreign tradition, ginmix kla niya ang mga aton nga mga genres nga native kag indigenous like urubaton, banggianay, sunggalambong, asoy, binalayban, intrahan niya sang foreign nga Mexican corrido using from Western literature, allusion, understatement, hyperbole, irony. Gusto mo makita ni Tanan, you Read the novel, Sitamblot, because it switches from prose to poetry, from poetry to drama, to epistolary, and back and forth. And he does this at the drop of, hand, of a handkerchief. Why? Because he was an excellent writer. Next slide. How his body of works consist consistently displayed excellence. In his 53-year literary career, he completed an unprecedented 61 novels. In these novels, what did he do? He extended with remarkable versatility and inventiveness the novel scope and style. Lain lain ng estilo ang novel niya. He enriched his dramatis personae with his flawed poster, Heroes and Feisty Heroines. You were treated very nicely or very dramatically to a reading earlier. 
did you notice the hero and the heroine? The hero was what you call a flawed hero, hindi perfect. So against the corrido, nga black and white characters, very very good hero, very very bad villain. Hindi si Musone siya ang iya hero. They are bad, they are flawed. Damo sila weakness, okay? Because they are human and believable. So there you have a, an exchange of words between two lovers. What is Katipayan complaining about? Salugunting is so unfaithful. Why? He has a roving eye, like most men. Malugay, mal, maluyagon iban nga babae. Usually, ang, ang Musona's hero, apat na yaliding lady. Okay, why? Because masyado sa kapalikero. Okay, he's very... He's very charismatic, he's very macho, he's very handsome. Women fall all over him. And he is, of course, not averse to feminine charms. And so that's why Katipayan was complaining. And what did you notice about Katipayan? She's a very strong woman. Amuni ang ginhimo niya sa hiligay ng literature. He introduced new character types which you could not see before him. So you could periodize Philip, uh, hiligay ng literature into pre-Mosones and post-Mosones. And he continually reinvented himself. Why? Because he specialized in first attempts. Ang wala pang inhimo sang iban, himoon niya. So the first Roman Aklef, what is that? It's a novel based on a real life story. This is the story of, of Josefino Sinisal. I don't know if you've heard of him. But he was a guy who actually, uh, well, spirited away, uh, very rich heiress in Manila, and the parents got back the girl again. The first feminist novel, Bagong Maria Clara. Sang wala pa na yan na imbinto ang word ng feminism, ginahimo na na yan ni Musones because he anticipated trends, alright? The first novel of humor, the first hidigay non satire. But he did not just write in quantity, he also wrote quality works. Ang serial novel, gintataas niya ang kalidad. Okay, so he wrote a lot, but he also wrote quality novels. And he dominated Hiligay non uh, novel for 34 years, which is why Santiago, Santiago Alba Mulato grants him 32 years, the longest reign among the three kings of the Hiligay non novel. Sinong opodya diri? Serapion Torre, who reigned for 17 years, and Conrado Norada, his successor, for 15. So, 17 lang and 15 against his 34. Champion siya gyapon. Okay, next. Okay. Considering that Mosones gave us Hiligay non literature's finest novels, when Margus Atubig first came out, all the Ilonggo writers, what did they do? They applauded him and they, they vied with each other. Nagkuntisanay sila uh, dayaw sa iya. But who was the one who made the, the most astute comment was made by Remigio Heredia because he said, Mosones combined Angel Magahong's touch for local color, Serapion Torres' gift for language, Miguel Montilibano's moral purpose, and Magdalena Sahalandoni's prodigious output and outdid them all. Next slide. That is why he is Siligay non Literature's most awarded writer. He got the 1988 Gawad Balagtas Award conferred by the Union ng Manunulat ng Pilipinas. In 1989, he, wa he won Gawad sa Sining Trophy from the Cultural Center of the Philippines. And in 1998, he got the Gawad Bonifacio Award sa Panitikan from the National Commission for Culture and the Arts. Next slide. Why is he a national artist? Because he covered all the major developments or isms in Hiligay non literature from its rise to its decline. He anticipated trends like feminism and magic realism, so it is not an exaggeration to periodize Hiligay literature as either pre Mosones and post Mosones. Therefore, any omission of his many literary achievements would leave a gaping hole in the history of Philippine literature. That is why Bel Sobrebega, prize winning Hiligay non short story writer and essayist, paid him the supreme accolade. 
when he said, no other writer could rightly claim to have done more for Hiligaynon literature than Ramon Musones. Next slide. And so, here is now Margo Satubig in translation. Because we cannot find the old copy. I have one given by Mariano Jolosa, and it is Puno Buho Sang Anay. And I use this for my translation because I thought if people cannot read the original, at least they can read the translation. And one of my favorite fantasies is that when I die and I go downstairs or upstairs, I will meet Mosones and Mosones will say to me like, like uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez to his uh, favorite translator, your version is better than mine. <laughs> Okay, next slide. It's just a fantasy. And the other book is Sri Visaya, which is his take on the Maragdas. Do we know what the Maragdas is? It is the most important piece of literature among the Western Visayas. It's the story of ten Bornean datos who came to Panay and bought land from the Atis and became what? Your ancestors. Okay, so this is his take on the Maragdas. And the next slide. A reading of a translation of two of his major novels, that's the one, okay, reveals that even outside Western Visayas, his importance is recognized. Uh, Bienvenido Lumbera, my uh, mentor, who told me I should be... I should be writing about Magdalena Halandoni and Nanat Mosones because he has never heard of Mosones. Finally got convinced because by the time I translated this, he wrote the book blurb and he said something like, Mosones is a master novelist who claims his rightful place in national literature. So after 32 years, I convinced him. A national artist, Virgilio Almario, announces the support of Mosones for national artists in his foreword to my translation. These were the people who voted for him to become national artist. And prize-winning longer writer, Leoncio de Riada, considers him the greatest Siligaynon writer and a writer of epic proportion whose recognition as national artist is long overdue. So now he is finally recognized. Therefore, given Musone's achievement, his talent is too large to be contained in one region. He belongs to the nation. That is why I entitled my talk, From Region to Nation. Next slide. Given the fact that we are a multi-ethnic, multilingual people with 70% of us living in the province, na the late national artist Rolando Tinio decades ago contended that Philippine literature is really in vernacular. Because most of us speak in a regional language, it is only uh, uh, literature in English and in Filipino are very powerful, are very well known, because those are the languages of power, but they are not the language of the majority, okay? Yet it took 45 years after the Order of the National Artists was instituted in 1972 for a writer from the region to break the monopoly of writers in English and in Filipino. Why is that? Because people in Manila control the power. And they looked down on us from the province. And so it took Musones to break that particular bias, okay? And so, considering Musones' groundbreaking work, not only in the novel, but in the promotion and the preservation of the language, of the Hiligaynon language, it is up, therefore, that the first regional writer to break the monopoly is Musones, and that is the reason why we honor him now. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Dr. Maria Cecilia Loxinava, for that very informative and, of course, very passionate uh, talk about Attorney Ramon Mozones. If there is one thing that uh, we I could take away from this talk, it has to be be careful with um, handsome, charming men and become a strong woman okay <laughs> okay so thank you once again and we will have more talk about uh, Do attorney ramon mazones with dr nava later in the open forum part of this program at this point let us uh, be entertained by a very special number to be given by miss rashid lonasco Ms. Rashields Lonasco. At this point, the floor is open for your questions, and I believe uh, our guest lecturer this morning is uh, very much ready to answer your questions about um, our doc attorney Ramon Mozones. Anyone who would like to start? Please ask a question. <laughs> if you don't ask a question, I, I would feel I have failed in my lecture. That means you did not get interested enough. Don't. Okay. 
You can uh, proceed to yes, the microphone. Please use the microphone. Yeah. Microphone in the center, yeah. And please introduce yourself. Uh, please introduce yourself before you ask the question. Good morning. Morning. Good morning, ma'am. I'm uh, attorney Jeremy Bionat, a student uh, once uh, several generations ago of Central Philippine University. Uh, while I'm aware that uh, the late Ramon Mozones was a graduate of uh, CPU College, CPC during the time, Central Philippine College, uh, College of Law, I wonder if you have come across his uh, earlier student days. Uh, I'm, I'm not aware if he, he also took his uh, bachelor of, uh, um, I mean, bachelor, no, associate in arts here in CPU, uh -huh. because I'm more interested in what could have uh, uh, made uh, Ramon Mosones a uh, great writer. What was it his... Uh, uh, academic background in CPU or what? Um, I think he started very early. This was a person who showed early a literary gift. Because when he was in grade school, he earned pocket money writing three-fourths of the class's composition and charging 20 centavos per piece. <laughs> And when he went on to high school, he founded, in the same year, two student organs, uh, papers, uh, High Times and Ang Panghili Ugyun. And uh, one American teacher of his was so impressed by what he did, he volunteered to become, I think the person's name was Robert Moses, he volunteered to become the advisor of the of the paper. I think that paper is still exists until now. What I do know from what he told me was that he started his law studies in Far Eastern University because he was still in Manila during that time. He started his literary career this way. Uh, he was a representative of the Federacion Obrero de Filipinas, and he was sent in 1936 to be a representative or a delegate from Iloilo for the, for the uh, convention of the labor union. At that point in time, Iloilo was having problems in the dockyards because of the problem between the rival unions, FOF, and I think the other one, uh, which was headed by an uncle of my husband, Jose Maria Nava. And the other one was, uh, I think, headed by Pascual Espinosa, if I remember right. And because of the problems in the, in the dockyard, many business, you know, uh, closed shop, and I think they left Iloilo. And he was one of those people who saw there was not much of a of a future for him here. So he went to Manila as a delegate and then never came back. What did he do? He applied in Hiligaynon to become a copy read, uh, proofreader. And he was assigned the lowest kind of job, which was to do translations of a comic strip called Ken Koy. I don't know if anybody remembers Ken Koy. Okay? Yes. Uh, anyway, later on he graduated to uh, translating short stories uh, of the, the writers that are not so important. But he was a young man in a hurry because he felt he could write better than the people he was translating. But be in order to live, he learned in six months, he perfected in six months Tagalog or Filipino and then wrote in Filipino in a rival magazine to earn money because he wanted to send himself to school and he went to FEU to earn a bachelor's degree preparatory to law. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Now you learned something. He wrote his composition. Yes, he so charged. Charged. <laughs>
<laughs> Enterprising. He was so good at it. He was so good at it. He decided might as well make money on it. Oh. Because, you know, his classmates did not know why, how, but they had money. He had no money, but he had talent. So what did he do? Well, uh, you might call this hack writing. But uh, I'm sure he made the good compositions, which was so I, it was so popular. Oh, it was a win-win situation. Win -win situation. So, some more questions from the audience. Yes, yes. ma'am, Thelma. Morning, ma'am. Morning. Okay. I'm more interested in you. But uh, yes, yes, ma'am. Please. please introduce yourself, Hanay, to be recognized. Okay, yeah. I'm Ma'am Thelma Hagisan from the Department of Languages, yeah. Mass Comm and Humanities. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm more interested in you. What are the circumstances that made you a scholar of Attorney Ramon Muzones, please? Ah, uh, okay. Well, I had um, a crisis in my professional career. Okay. in La Salle, mm -hmm. and I decided uh, to go back to school. Okay, okay because, um, all right, I think I, have, I had an education which most people in my generation had, or uh, we still have that kind of education. We call it a colonial education. Mm -hmm. uh, my interest in literature was fired by reading when I was little, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, Rapunzel, Cinderella, etc. These are all from Brothers Grimm and Hans yeah. Christian Andersen, Western sure. Literature. Mm. So when I uh, finished high school, I went on to UST. First, I took medicine, and then after finishing my pre-medicine degree, I shifted to uh, AB Humanities, uh, major in English Literature. Why? Because my education was so colonial, the only literature I knew was Western. Then after that, I decided to go in for an MA, master's degree in, again, English literature. Then I got married, went home to Bacolod, and started the teaching in La Salle. And halfway through the whole thing, I decided, there is something wrong with what I am teaching. Wala a sense of fit. Daw kalibagun, manisay na tudlo. Kung kasagay man ko niya, tudlo. English literature, while well, people are dying in Manila, you know, you have the EDSA revolution, etc. and so forth, and so on, uh, nationalization in literature, etc. And so I wrote this um, uh, mentor of mine, who was my department chair, when I was uh, teaching in Ateneo, uh, Dr. Lumberan, I said, there is something wrong with my education. I think I am. I should go. I should. I should not be teaching English literature. Ano man ayang? Ano man ayang connection as rapound sa aton man kagniti as Elliot. And he said, "I balik dere magiskuela ka. And you take Philippine studies because now in UP there is a program called Philippine Studies where you study the literature and the culture of your own region because that is really what we should be doing." Notice, okay? Kung wala ko nagtudlo abroad sa South Korea, why ko kanutar na kalibagon din sang aton education? Why? Japanese children, Korean children, French children, etc. go to school to become better Frenchmen, Japan, better Japanese, better Korean. We go to school to become better colonials. <laughs> I go to school to become an American. Okay, why? Kaya ang ginabasa ko, libro nga iya sa mga kano, o iya sa mga English people, or even Russian. Pero hindi atun nga literatura. And so, what am I doing? I did a PhD with very... I worked very hard for this degree because La Salle would not even allow me to go. Okay? Because they said I was needed. But, ina balang wala na meaning I'm your life, and da balang... You don't feel inspired teaching anymore. Why? Because you feel like it doesn't mean anything. Okay? Until I got back on track. Yeah. And then I came back. What did I do? Uh, first, uh, to get into the Philippine Studies program, the first thing to do is to turn in a dissertation proposal that goes that uh, involves three disciplines. One in the humanities, maybe two in the social science. 
And my first choice is Magdalena Halandoni. And I was turned down by UP. Why? Because they said, somebody has done her already. But I said, I will do all her 36 novels. We don't care. Somebody has done one already on one novel. Okay? Oh, sige. Then I will do Jose Maria Nava. And then naunahan ko ni Alfred McCoy, ang tanan-tanan ng material, yung corner niya na, kay kadamo sa yakwarta. Okay? Because he had three grants. And he told me, you cannot do what I did. I have money. <laughs> and I did not have money. Then, I did Ramon Mosones, and I told my advice, and I said, Sino na siya? Yeah? Why would I bati siya? Okay? <laughs> Who is he? I've never heard of him. And I said, he is very good. He is national artist material. Ah, hindi na magdaog. Kunin na yung translate So therefore, back to the drawing board. And so, let me put it this way. I think... What made me the way I am is because katig asa akong ulo. Okay? Because whenever somebody says, you can't do it, I will show you. I can. Okay? And that's exactly how it was with me. When I first came to visit Rex's father, I introduced kong lawas kong at sa UP ko, etc. and so forth and so on. And I said, I will write about you. He wasn't impressed. <laughs> Did not want to be written about. Why? Because kadamo na siya material ngin pahulam sa mga researchers before nga wagin uli. So ba si Abiyah maabskon man ko sa iya material. And si Selenia sa akin, ah okay, kung gusto mo, sige, go ahead, but I will not help you. Okay? <laughs> so love-hate relationship kami. So why siya gana sa akin, mas pagid ko may gana sa iya. Okay? And so that was the way it is. So if you want to know, the key to my character is, you use reverse psychology on me. <laughs> and I will you. respond to it. The more you say, you cannot do it, I will do the it. More. That's exactly what he did. Sinin niya sa akin, masulat ka sa akin, ay, hindi na mahimo. O, nga aman, ang ako mga nobela, nakladula na. Hindi na makita. Uh, paano mo na siya isudot? Uh, sing ko, oh, sige ah, kung hindi ka magbulig sa akin, ah, di, mangita ko yung iban eh. Okay, and then so, that's the way it is. 32 years. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very Happy much. Happy Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll have one last, siguro. One last question from the audience. Do we have one last question? Yes. Yes, kindly. One last question. Ah, okay. Hello. Um, good morning, ma'am. I am Don Emmanuel Derek F. Pedregosa from Grade 12 Humes, Humanities and Social Sciences 2. Um, my question is, ma'am, what is Ramon, for you, what is Ramon L. Muzones um, works nga pwede siya mabasa na munsubong nga makarilig kapi? Margot sa tubig. Besides uh, Margot sa tubig. Sri Bisaya. And I am translating a third one of almost through. Malala nga gutom. If I find a publisher, I will ask permission from Rex to have it published. Because this is now about Iloilo politics and the changes in Iloilo. The big difference between Negros and Iloilo is Iloilo has a strong middle class. Okay, because in the 1950s, 1953 in particular, a man by the name of, Lud of Rodolfo Ganson wrested control from the Lopezes to become the first mayor, elected mayor of Iloilo City. Kasi una appointed ina ang position nga ina. So what he did was gin kum gin. Tambio niya ang law. He called it the freedom law. Or they called it the Ganson law. Which made the position of mayor of Iloilo appoint, uh, elected. And after that, anong nag at natabo? Mga middle class na ang nagsululud. Uh, the great difference between us in Negros and you here is that before the socio-economic elite here were also the political elite. 
sa ilo sa bakolo di amo man na gihapon diriya indi na ang socio-economic elite socio-economic lang ya sila pero ang political elite ara na sa kamot sang middle class that's essentially the difference okay and to me that is very fascinating because what he did was he wrote or he captured the change society in transition okay and we are always fascinated by change because change is the only certainty in life yes may, may i add i think there is a an original version at the provincial library there is yeah, one copy it. but you're uh -huh. gonna take it out okay there is also Zero. one in uh, i think in lambuna or kalinog they are very rare, yeah. but if you can find one, buy it because it is now a collector's item. <laughs> okay. So and actually, when we do, when we, I do lectures on Mosones, what I do is I bring a copy of the original, original, and then a, my own translation, and I ask them to read it one after the other to show you how well we can capture in English. The yeah. language of Hiligaynon. I will check, ma'am, with uh, the provincial library mm. if. Uh, yes, you do that. Uh, through the kind permission of the family, if we can uh, yes. have it reproduced. Yes, here. And uh, through the alumni association, we will uh, give uh, one copy to CPU library. It will be ideal <laughs> to print the two books side by side. So that the students will be able to read yes. it in its original... And you will uh, fall in love with your own language. It is yes, a beautiful oh. language. The problem is we were never taught to love our own. We will, we will. Before we became nationalists, we were internationalists first. Why? Because we are a product of colonization. So now is the time to write against our colonizers. Okay? Yes. Thank you very much for that very interactive uh, talk we had with uh, our guest lecturer, of course, um, Dr. Maria Cecilia Loxinava. And at this point, we will be presenting our token of appreciation and certificate of our appreciation to our guest lecturer. The certificate reads, Central Philippine University Department of Languages, Mass Communication and Humanities presents the certificate of appreciation to Dr. Maria Cecilia Loxin Nava for sharing her time, effort, and expertise as guest speaker during the Ramon Mozones Memorial Lecture on the 26th of February 2019 at Conference Room 1, 4th Floor, Henry Luz III Library, Central Philippine University, Haro, Iloilo City, Philippines, given this 26th day of February 2019 at Central Philippine University. Signed, Esther Rose Romarate, Officer in Charge, D Department of Languages, Mass Communication and Humanities, um, Dr. Stella G. Fernandez, Dean, College of Arts and Sciences, Dr. Irving Domingo El Rio, Vice President for Academic Affairs, and Dr. Teodoro C. Robles, University President. And to present our token of appreciation, token and certificate of appreciation is uh, Reverend, our Reverend Joniel Howard Hico, our Vice President for Student Affairs, Attorney Von Lovell Bedona, CPU Board of Trustees Chair, and Professor Esther Rosa Marate, the OIC of the Department of Languages.
Joining with us this morning is our Mr. Rex Mozones, the son of Attorney Mozones and Ms. Gloria Mozones, the wife of uh, Sir Rex Mozones. Once again, thank you very much, Dr. Maria Cecilia Loxinava, for sharing everything that you know about our CPU alumni, our CPU alumnus, Attorney Ramon L. Mozones, and of course, a national, who, who is also a National Artist for Literature awardee. For the closing remarks, may I request Attorney Von Lovell Bedona, the chairperson of our Board of Trustees, sir? If uh, examination will be given by Dr. Uh, Maria Cecilia Luxinava today, no one can get a perfect score based on the life of uh, Attorney Ramon Mosones. Probably even the son, whom I finally called as Nong Rex, uh, cannot even, I think, get the perfect score because he kept on reading the book. And anyway, Attorney Ramon Mosones is a lawyer, the official representative of the family is a lawyer. We have that uh, popular and common term in the practice of law, that is evidence. If you want to prove a fact, then you must offer evidence. And there are two types, one is direct and the second one is circumstantial in the absence of direct evidence. What we have heard today from our resource person and lecturer is a form of direct evidence about the life and exemplary, uh, extraordinary achievement of our honorary attorney. There was one important thing that struck me so much about the lecture, which is not absolutely part of the lecture, but uh, was mentioned by our resource person. That is about Attorney Musones Ramon being the delegate of Iloilo in the Convention of Union uh, Estivadores de Filipinas. The that is a very significant and important union in my life. And meaning to say, Attorney Musonis and myself have something in common. Membership in that union. When I became the national president of all the unions of Pepsi-Cola, and that is under the UOEF. And I became executive vice president managing that union for the whole Philippines after the murder of our president when I became executive vice president. So I really ask uh, our resource person if she was really referring to UOAF, Union uh, de Obreros Estivadores de Filipinas. The, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Luxin Nava for that very inspiring talk about the life of uh, Attorney Mosonis. Probably high school students, first year college students, are now trying to prepare themselves on how to become writer. And just take note, 20 years after 20 years. 20 years, someone from Aklan, 20 years, someone from Antiki, and 20 years later, Attorney Ramon Mosones, who became the awardee. We understand very much that this uh, award given or conferred upon Attorney Ramon Mosones is even prestigious than Ramon Magsaysay Award. 
because in this award only Filipino is entitled to that award. Foreign nationals are not. So this is a very special type of award and this is even recognized by the Senate of the Philippines. And some of them are knowledgeable of this. Some of them research about the life of Attorney Ramon Mosones, and even one senator said that he congratulated CPU for having a product in the person of Attorney Ramon Mosones. <laughs> On behalf of Central Philippine University Board of Trustees, I would like to extend our appreciation to the family of uh, Ramon Mosones, represented by Attorney Rex Mosones, whom we knew many years ago when he was still very active in the practice of law, uh, for giving us this opportunity to celebrate with them uh, and to, to receive that kind of honor and prestige being given to CPU by Attorney Ramon Mosones. And uh, finally, I would like to thank each and every member of the family of the late Attorney Ramon Mosones, who is here today. My appreciation to all of you. And to uh, the ones responsible for the preparation of this program, especially CPU alumni Association Incorporated, headed by Engineer Boy Halbuena. The alumni is even faster in making decisions than the Board of Trustees. <laughs> we are still planning to do this, but probably on some other occasions, because uh, when uh, Professor Romarati conferred with me about this, uh, we have no scheduled meeting for the Board. It will be on March 2. So thank you very much to all of you. Thank you, Professor Dr. Maria Cecilia uh, Loxinaba, to the members of the family, and to all of you who would want to aspire to become writer and later on be recipient of this very prestigious award that was conferred to our honorary today, even posthumous attorney Ramon Musones. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you very much, Attorney Von Vedona. This has been a very productive, interactive morning, ladies and gentlemen, and we hope that you learned a lot from the lecture that we had this morning. Thank you very much, and we wish you all a very great Tuesday ahead of you. God bless you. Thank you. You may want to check the National Artist Award that was given to Attorney Mozones. It's over here. The family lent us. It's all right to take a picture.